a criminal named Joris Fontaine, known as Black Jack, was sentenced to hang in 1656. After his death, this individual would become the protagonist of one of Rembrandt's most famous and intriguing paintings, The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Dyman. In the scene, his cadaver can be seen surrounded by nine people, including Dr. Dyman, who was tasked with dissecting his brain in front of a curious audience that paid money to witness this act. Unfortunately, much of this original work was lost in a devastating fire that consumed the guild room of surgeons in Amsterdam in 1723. Only a fraction of the original canvas survived, preserving a glimpse of this curious scene. But why did Rembrandt, renowned for his portraits and biblical scenes, venture to depict such a macabre theme as the public dissection of a criminal? Furthermore, how was an artist allowed to witness and publicize such an event? In this video, we will attempt to answer these questions and thoroughly analyze this painting to understand the procedure Dr. Dyman was conducting on this criminal's brain. Let's begin. In the 17th century, public autopsies were a common spectacle in Europe, especially in progressive cities like Amsterdam. These anatomy lessons served not only as an essential educational tool for medical students and trainee surgeons, but also attracted a broader audience who paid to attend. The dissection of cadavers became a social event, a macabre yet fascinating spectacle offering a rare and detailed view of the human body's interior. Anatomy lessons were an especially challenging subject for painters in 17th century Amsterdam. The Surgeons Guild typically commissioned these works several years after the appointment of a new anatomist in the city. Rembrandt van Rijn, one of the most prominent painters of his time, showed a particular interest in anatomical dissection scenes. Rembrandt painted two anatomy lessons, the most famous being The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicolaes Tulp from 1632. In this painting, Dr. Tulp, a renowned surgeon, dissects the arm of a criminal named Adrian Adrian Sun, alias The Kid. The composition of the painting, with its focus on the dissected arm, dramatic lighting and attention to anatomical detail, makes it a masterpiece of both science and art. However, less known is Rembrandt's second anatomical painting, The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Dyman from 1656. Part of the reason for its relative obscurity is that this work was partially destroyed in a fire in 1723, leaving only a fragment of the original canvas. The existing version is a digital reconstruction made by Fijis Volzak in 1998, based on one of Rembrandt's sketches of the painting before completing the final work. Unfortunately, only a small part of the painting survives today, and although it is less famous than Dr. Torp's lesson, it is equally intriguing and reveals another chapter in the history of anatomy and art. The criminal Joris Fontaine, known as Blackjack, was the unfortunate subject of this second anatomy lesson. After being condemned to the gallows in 1656 for a series of crimes, his body was handed over to the Surgeons Guild of Amsterdam for public dissection. We see Fontaine's body surrounded by nine people, including Dr. Dyman, who is performing a delicate dissection of the criminal's brain. This leads us to ask, what exactly was Dr. Dyman doing in Joris Fontaine's brain? What was he looking to find or demonstrate? Before addressing these questions, I want to remind you that in our catalogue, you'll find this painting available along with 300 other historical paintings that I've selected for you to have in your home. You have the option to choose your favourite painting in whatever size you prefer and in different finishes such as fine art print, gallery canvas or framed canvas. You can also have one of these paintings as a phone case, so besides protecting your phone, you can carry a piece of art with you wherever you go. Shipping is completely free worldwide, so once you finish watching the video, I invite you to visit the catalogue through the link provided in the description. Thank you to everyone who has made purchases in the last few days. Your support makes it possible to create these types of videos. 
Rembrandt, in this painting, transports us to a small 17th century anatomical theatre, an intimate and dark place where public dissections were performed for the education and entertainment of spectators. The scene takes place in the guild hall of the Amsterdam Surgeons, a space specifically designed for such demonstrations. Rembrandt has configured the scene so that the dissection table seems to protrude from the canvas, placing us, as modern observers, among the attendees of the event. At the centre of the scene is Dr. Jan Dyman, who succeeded Nicolaus Torp as Praelector Anatomia of the Surgeons Guild in 1653. Dyman, known for his skill and knowledge in anatomy, is the protagonist of this lesson. Dyman held this position for 13 years until his death in 1666, during which time he was responsible for the anatomical education of surgery apprentices and guild members. In the painting, Dyman is performing a craniotomy, an opening of the skull, to expose and demonstrate the folk cerebri, a sickle-shaped structure within the brain, which has a hidden meaning that we will analyze later. Next to him, we see the assistant surgeon Giesbert Culkin, this detail is not trivial as Giesbert Culkin follows in the footsteps of his father, Matisse Culkin, who was also portrayed by Rembrandt in the famous The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicolas Taupe in 1632. Giesbert, holding the cranial cap with his left hand, assists Dyman in the procedure. Later in his career, Giesbert was appointed governor of the Surgeons Guild, where he was primarily responsible for the examinations of surgery apprentices, thus showing the importance of medical training and the transmission of knowledge at that time. The corpse being dissected in the painting belongs to Joris Fontaine, a criminal with a considerable criminal record. In 1655, Fontaine was captured after committing a robbery in a textile shop, during which he injured his pursuers with a knife. For these acts, he was sentenced to death by hanging. His body was handed over to the Surgeons Guild for dissection, a common practice at the time, as the bodies of executed criminals were used for anatomical study. Rembrandt shows Fontaine lying on the dissection table with his head raised to better expose the brain, a technique that maximizes the visibility of the procedure for observers. The painting not only documents a scientific event, but also reflects the culture and science of the 17th century. Anatomy lessons were very popular public events, and Dyman's lesson in 1656 generated 187 guilders and six pennies, indicating that a large number of people attended this scene. Guild members paid six cents and outsiders four cents to attend these lessons, highlighting the blend of education and spectacle in these events. Dyman's lesson has a deeper meaning than mere anatomical demonstration. The Falk Cerebri, a sickle-shaped structure that Dyman is lifting with forceps, is a powerful symbol. The sickle is a tool associated with death, used by death to cut down human life. By showing the human scythe in the form of the folk cerebri, Rembrandt and Dyman wanted to remind their contemporaries of the fleeting nature of existence, a memento mori that underscores the inevitability of death and the fragility of human life. Another common question is why the abdomen of the corpse is open. This indicates that Dyman had begun the anatomical lesson with the dissection of the perishable organs of the abdomen, a common practice in 17th century anatomy lessons. Normally, lessons started with the dissection of these organs as they decomposed more quickly. Although the chest is still intact while Dyman performs the brain dissection, this may have been an artistic choice by Rembrandt. By keeping the chest closed, Rembrandt may have wanted to keep the focus on the brain and the falx cerebri, highlighting the continuity of the anatomical process and the importance of the brain as the center of the lesson. Rembrandt's depiction of the brain and falx cerebri is quite accurate, assuring us that he was present at this lesson and used a real cadaver as a model. However, some parts of the anatomical procedure shown are not anatomically precise. According to a study by the University of Groningen about this painting, which I will leave in the description of this video, in reality, it would be impossible to lift and rotate the Falk Cerebri as Dyman does in the painting without completely separating the structure from its base. 
This demonstrates that Rembrandt was not seeking to create an exact anatomical study, but a work that also had a strong artistic and symbolic component. Another curiosity is the influence of the famous 16th century anatomist Andreas Vesalius on this painting. Vesalius considered the brain to be the most privileged part of the body, the seat of skills and senses. In his Opus Magnum, Vesalius advocated separating the head from the body before a brain dissection, something that Rembrandt chose not to follow in this painting. In 17th century anatomy lessons, it was common to separate the head from the body for brain dissection, but in this case, Rembrandt decided to keep the head attached to the torso, possibly to highlight the continuity of body and mind. In summary, this painting is far more than a simple portrayal of an anatomy lesson. It is a fusion of science and art, with each detail representing something significant that Rembrandt wanted to convey. While we can never fully analyze this painting due to only a small part of the scene remaining today, the incomplete nature of the work adds an extra layer of mystery to its allure. Tell me in the comments what you think of this painting and whether you believe it is ethical for a criminal to be used for scientific study and depicted in such a famous painting. Although I didn't mention it throughout the video, today it would be illegal to use someone's body for something like this without their authorization. Thank you for watching the video until the end. Don't forget to leave a like if you found it interesting and subscribe to see two analyses like this every week. In the description, you'll find a link to the store where you can buy your favorite painting and my social media if you want to see more art content. See you soon. Bye.